Okay, there's someone on the line. Hello? 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 Yeah, hello. Is Jeff Daniels there? Yeah, he's right here. Go ahead. Yeah, hello. This is Mr. Berger. I've got a YouTube channel talking about art, and I was wondering if you'd check that out, but I also am a big fan of Dumb and Dumber. And remember when you said, just what I think, you couldn't get any dumber, you'd do something like this and totally redeem yourself. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Berger. <laughs> Scholars, welcome back to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and master educator who attempts to provide you with the best in art historical content. If you like this video, if you like the content, make sure you interact with it. It helps me in the algorithm and all those things, uh, YouTube-ish. Much appreciated. Thank you. You are a good guy. Now, there are some masters of the Renaissance that we always talk about or hear about. We hear about Da Vinci. We hear about Michelangelo. We hear about, you know, your Ninja Turtle types. We know how to handle ourselves in the sewer. <laughs> now, that being said and true, I think it's also important that we look at some of the slightly obscure but very, very important artists of the Renaissance as well. And today, as you know, if you clicked on the video, we're going to be taking a look at Filippo Brunelleschi, one of the absolute masters of the Renaissance. So let's jump right in. As a goldsmith, sculptor, architect, archaeologist, and inventor, it's fair to say that Filippo Brunelleschi is a true Renaissance man. Known as Pippo to his friends, he spent his entire life in Florence, Italy, and developed a reputation as the leading mind of his time. Little is known about his early studies. However, he was first in the public's eye when he entered a competition to design a second set of bronze doors for the baptistry in Florence. Although he lost the competition to Lorenzo Ghiberti, he was determined and he was becoming recognized as a man with great potential. Some of his first known projects include a wooden crucifix as well as an architectural design for an orphanage known as the Hospital of the Innocents. You're nobody. Don't tell anyone. Filippo Brunelleschi spent a lot of his time in his early years working as a clockmaker. As a designer, Brunelleschi excelled. He developed a system for drawing space so that it looked as though you were looking into a real space. It was given a mathematical relationship to the placement of every object in the drawing or painting or whatever he was creating. This discovery of perspective, or more specifically, one-point linear perspective in 1415, would revolutionize art forever. Side note. Filippo Brunelleschi would teach this technique to many of his students, including one of the greatest sculptors of his time, the great Renaissance artist and namesake to the Ninja Turtle, Donatello Bardi. If the professor is worried, we should take it seriously. Filippo Brunelleschi's main passion and contribution to the world of art was in the form of architecture. He loved Roman architecture style so much that he, along with his student, as mentioned, Donatello Bardi, traveled to Rome to study these ancient ruins. As a matter of fact, Brunelleschi led the first excavations of ancient Roman ruins. It was this study of the classic architecture that aided him in his first major architectural commission, his contribution to the Basilica di Santa Maria del Flori, or commonly known as, at least in my mind, the Cathedral of Florence. This large structure had many parts that required many different groups to help assemble it over many, many years. Brunelleschi was responsible for several parts of that, including the design of the prominent dome or duomo. At the time that it was completed, it was the largest cathedral in all of Europe. With room for 30,000 people, this would be the prototype of architectural projects like St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, St. Paul's Basilica in London, and the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C. 
as is true with all of these structures. The dome is the crown jewel of the structure. And as is also true, it takes many people to pull off a project of this magnitude. The building of the cathedral in Florence began on September the 9th, 1296. The work began under the original designer until he passed away and then it was taken over by his assistant who died in 1337 and his assistant took it over until the Black Plague would halt the project for a year. Work on this cathedral would resume in 1349 with several architects working on the project. In 1419, a competition was set up to find someone that could build the dome to go on top of the cathedral. There were several people that were in the running for this, but there were two big names to compete. Once again, Lorenzo Gaberti and Filippo Brunelleschi. A lot of these domes were started, but would collapse in because the physics and the math and the structure just wouldn't support the outward thrust that was put on those walls by the pressure of a dome on top of it. It is said that all of these architects would come in with their plan, but Brunelleschi would come in with only an egg. And here's the answer. <laughs> this was his plan, to build an egg-shaped dome on top of the Cathedral of Florence. It was ridiculous and brilliant and, for whatever reason, he won the commission. It is said that he refused to give up all of the plans or the exact process to how he would pull off this magnificent architectural feat. The inspiration for the design came from the Pantheon. Only without concrete, he would be using bricks and mortar. His dome would end up being a double-walled dome at 140 feet in diameter that was way out of square, it would be the widest dome created since the Pantheon. The design was for the height of 300 feet from the top of the dome down to the floor, which is twice the height of the Pantheon. In order to create this project the way he had it in his mind, he would need to develop some new technologies. This required him to design several practical tools like machines that would lift up utilitarian loads from the floor on up to the top of the dome. This horse-powered hoist was used to lift stone, brick, and wood on the scaffolding and on up to the top of the dome. The lift could raise a thousand pounds up 200 feet in about 13 minutes. Now that seems like quite a while, but there was no better machine available at that time in history. And it was a whole lot better than lugging that stuff up a set of stairs. He also created several temporary movable scaffoldings that could be pivoted around the dome as well. Another mechanism that he used to save some time was by creating an area near the top of the cathedral where the crew would go up and have their breaks so they wouldn't have to climb all the way down to the floor or out of the cathedral to take a break. But not today. Ghiberti would call this project an impossible feat for Brunelleschi, but he was assigned to help Brunelleschi actually create the dome. Feeling insulted by that, Brunelleschi faked a sickness which would place Ghiberti in charge of the project. This was all part of a strategic plan to expose Ghiberti's lack of knowledge about architecture. And it worked. The project was completely handed over to Brunelleschi and he was given total control of the entire project. As mentioned, this is a brick and mortar type dome. To this day, we do not completely understand how in the world he calculated all of these mismatched lengths of walls on the octagon so that all of the walls would raise to one singular point. This is due in part also to the fact that all of his sketches and plans were destroyed after the dome was completed. This dome is the largest masonry dome ever created. Brunelleschi would have worked for 16 years on the 140 year project of getting this cathedral in Florence completely completed. Brunelleschi's portion of the project was completed largely due to his amazing design and mathematical abilities. Any stupid moron! 
Because of Filippo Brunelleschi's contributions to the people of Florence, because of the respect that the people had for him as a designer and creator, after his passing in 1446, he would be buried within the walls of the Cathedral of Florence. And the inscription over his body reads, Here lies the body of the great and genius man, Filippo Brunelleschi of Florence. Scholars, I hope you enjoy that content as much as I enjoy bringing it to you. If uh, you have any interactions that you'd like to send my way, I greatly appreciate any interactions with the video or the other video content that I have on the Mr. Burger channel. We'll see you next time. You have yourself a good day. Well, that about does her. Wraps are all up. <laughs>